So in this presentation, we'll have a look at uh, what's called BIBA or bins and balls one time signatures. Okay, so what we have in, uh, in, in creating trusted messages is that we have a signing process. So let's have Bob here and we have Alice over here. So Bob creates a public key and then has a private key. He will take a message and then we'll take a hash of the message and then we'll typically sign it with his private key. Then uh, Bob sends that over to Alice. Alice then checks the that she can uh, decrypt the hash of the message with Bob's public key. So she will get his public key from a trusted source and then she'll take the message and perform her, her own hash on it and check that she can decrypt it with her with Bob's public key. If she can, then she proves that Bob is the one with the private key. She also proves that the message has not been changed. So we add in both integrity and an identity check. So the main methods that we have for uh, signing are based on our public key or asymmetric encryption methods. So here we are, there's Alice. The, the most important techniques are RSA and elliptic curve. With RSA, we have a modulus, which is equal to P times Q. We then encrypt the message with an encryption key, mod n, and decrypt the cipher to the power of a decryption key, mod n. The problem with RSA is that quantum uh, computers will be able to factorize the value of n back to p and q uh, fairly easily. Once P and Q are found, then it's easy to find N, and then it's easy to find the decryption key D. So when quantum computers come along, they will be able to crack RSA. With elliptic curve, what we have is a generator point, and then we have a secret key value of N. We then add this point here, N time, to find our public key. The public key, it's too difficult to be able to find the value of n, even though we know the value of g. Unfortunately, again, with quantum computers, uh, it is fairly easy to find uh, the private key here, or the value of n. Along with that, with discrete logarithms, we have L gamma. And with L gamma, we have g to the power of x mod n, where it's not possible to find the value of x, even though we have a, a generator value and an and the n value, we can't find the value of x. But again, quantum computers can easily find the discrete, uh, solve the discrete logarithm problem. So this is the problem that we have and that we'll have to move away from this type of encryption of something and then decryption of it. It's not as a trapdoor function. So another method that we can have is to have a signed hash. And in this presentation, we'll be looking at uh, one method uh, of, of creating that. So let's initially look at the basic theory behind uh, BIBA. With this, we have 
n bins and we have m balls. What we must do is to throw the balls into a bin and they will fall randomly within uh, each of the of the bins. So what we want to do it with this is to end up with one bin with two balls in it. And we need to understand when that will happen. So if we take an example of having five bins, then what's the probability that we will have two uh, balls in any of the bins? Well, we throw the first ball and it might land there. So now what's the probability that we won't win uh, in the when we throw the next ball? And we can see we have four empty bins. So the probability of us not winning or getting two balls into one of the bins is four and five or 80%. The chances of us getting the two in there will thus be 20%. Now with three balls here, if we haven't won already, then we'll have one there and one there. So now we have three empty bins. So we have a three in five uh, chance of not winning. Okay, so it's now four times five after three balls times three over five and that's 0.48. So the chance of us winning at this point is about 52%. For the next one, uh, we could have uh, one here, one here, one there, and we have two left, so then that's two-fifths, and we have a 19.2% chance that we haven't managed to get two balls into at the bins. We can keep going on until on the sixth attempt, if we've been very lucky, on the sixth attempt, we will manage to get uh, two balls into one of the, the bins. So this is the basis uh, of this. What's the probability of us finding two balls in the bin uh, even before we've managed to uh, put all of the uh, throw all of the, the balls or use up all of the bins. And this is called the birthday paradox. So here's our example here. Okay, so if we take five bins and there we go, there is a 20% chance of us getting two balls into one of the bins. It, after the third go, it's 52%, then 80%, 96%, and obviously after six throws, uh, we will have at least one bin with two balls. We can also calculate the average number of throws it will take us to get at least two balls into one of the bins. And in this case, it's 3.8, 3.28. We can try it with 15 bins. We can see very quickly, uh, it only takes us five throws before we have a greater than 50% chance of getting two balls into the bins. In this case, we will take an average of 5.5 throws before we have at least two balls in the bins. And this brings us on to what's called the birthday paradox. And it's used to, uh, and it's a method of defining if, the, if you have a room of people, what's the probability that uh, at least two people in the room will have the same birthday. And it's a bit like having the bins where we can have 365 bins and then we can keep throwing balls in and and they will drop in one of the bins. What's the chance that two, one bin will have two balls in it? And what we can see here 
is that it only requires 23 goes or 23 people in a room to have a better than 50% chance of uh, them having the same birthday. If we go up to 30, then it's 70%. And then even when we get to about 50 people in a room, we have a 97% chance that at least two people in the room will have the same birthday. And we go, go on by looking at hashes. So for a 10-bit hash, we can see here that if we take, uh, say, 72 guesses or random values, we have a 92.2% chance that we'll come up with the same value or a collision. There's a 16-bit uh, hash. And we can see it will take 321 goes before, uh, on average, and we will have a, a hash, we will have a hash collision. Okay, so this is an example of the, the birthday uh, paradox. 24.6 goes of average, of, uh, on average, uh, will give us a 50% a chance of uh, of uh, two people with the same birthday. And this happened when uh, Nat McHugh in 2014 took two images and then used MD5 uh, hashing and stuffed bytes randomly into the two images. And in the end, he came up with the same hash for both of the images. And it's because of the birthday paradox. It took him just 10 hours and 65 cents to, uh, to process this within the Amazon cloud. He has since created three images and did the same uh, methodology and created the same hash signature. So the basic uh, premise of the hash collision is that we take a hash of a message and that's equal to the hash of another message. The Biba method uh, uses this uh, weakness around the birthday paradox uh, to be able to create a, a one-time signature. So Bob basically creates a number of random values and then we'll create a public key which is the, the hash of each of these values. He keeps the private values secret and publishes the public key values. This is a one-time only method. So every time he needs to create a new set of private keys and a new public key set of public key values. Eve, although she's listening, cannot determine what the original values of X1, X2 and Xn are because she can't reverse back the SHA value here, especially if these are nonce values. Then Bob takes the message and then adds one of his uh, private key values on to the message and then takes a hash of it. Now he does a search of all the other values that he has to find a collision. When he finds a collision, he takes the message and the found value and hashes them and ends up with the same hashed value. This creates a collision. Bob then, with the message, publishes the value of xi now and also xj, the value he's just found. He's just released one of his private key values and, well, two of his private key values and Alice will then check to see if these values were part of his public key. When she does, she knows that uh, Bob knew these values before uh, he published these values. Eve will have to search and try and brute force uh, to find two values that uh, Bob has as his private key value. 
it's a one-time signature because now Bob has revealed two of his values so you will have to go back and regenerate all the private key values again and the public key values but there are ways around this this method is quantum robust and is uh, the basis of uh, other quantum robust hashed based signature methods so that's so let's have a look at uh, the coding for this okay so here's a message hello and we're generating a, a secret just one value here one private key value obviously we would create many of them but I'll just create one value so the hash plus the message is this so now uh, Bob must search from one two three up to some uh, maximum value until he finds a collision so in this case he's found a value a nonce value at 11748 that gives a hash here and when we take the hash of that it gives the same hash as hello 7232 so then he publishes 7232 and 11784 Alice then checks that she can get a collision when she takes the message and those two values Bob would have taken this value and published this value as his public key with the SHA-1 value that relates to this value Alice then checks that this value here and this value appear as a hashed value within his public key so in this case I've used uh, the Go uh, programming language to, to create this and uh, this is our hash function I've truncated the hash function to make it easier for us to find the value just five characters in, in the hash obviously it would be uh, longer and this is the loop here that will go around and checking to see if it can find a collision so if I try again with another random value we can see here that the hash signature changes each time from there we can even make the message longer and again it's searching for uh, a match and it's found it uh, uh, here with this value okay so that's been an overview of the BIBA method and it's where we can use hash collisions which are normally a bad thing we really wouldn't want to have hash collisions but how we can use this to create a quantum robust uh, hash uh, signature method okay thank you